Allah is not reducing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad, sir, or the unbelievers in the or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. He says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. So, and he has made from water every living thing. The following clip is a lecture that was delivered by Sheikh Ahmed Didat in United Emirate Arab in late 1980s. If you have all watched this lecture, entitled Quran, A Miracle of Miracles, you will find something different in this lecture, because generally Sheikh Ahmed Didat often delivers lectures on comparative religions targeting non-Muslims, especially Christians. However, this time, it was not only for Christians, Sheikh Didat specialized his lectures for atheists, agnostics and secular Muslims. And brothers and sisters, as the result of this great talk of Sheikh Didat, we are sure that this clip will make you more aware of the existence of Almighty God, as well as more grateful for being a devout Muslim. Substance of the message. Allah says, another example I give you. Awalam lazina kafar. This is do not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can't they see? In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Anna samawati wal arda kana That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. Fafatak nahuma. And he split the messenger. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no, no. What can the poor man understand? Well, what did he know about the universe, about the creation of the heavens and the earth? What did he know? He only accepted whatever was said, if this was Allah's kalam, amanna saddakna. We hear and we accept, we believe. This was Iman that they had. They didn't have a grasp. Allah is not reducing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad, sir, or the unbelievers in the world, or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. That these astronomers with the mighty telescopes, when they're looking into space and they're analyzing the, the movements in the heavens, and they're telling you as if they did it, if they are the ones who are making these things, this machine, this clock to work, this clock of the universe, the way they explain it as if they are doing it. Such a person, with his great learning, he says that this universe came into being with a big bang, billions of years ago. Because he's watching the universe and he's noticing that these heavenly bodies are receding from a central place somewhere, is all going out in all directions, moving away, away, away. Like a balloon. When you blow, it gets bigger and bigger. Something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they're receding from us at a faster and faster speed. At a faster and faster speed. And once they reach the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, once they reach that speed, we won't be able to see it anymore because the light that is coming from there, it won't be coming anymore, it's going away. So we must discover bigger and better telescopes to see the sights, the wonders, otherwise we'll miss the bus. So they say that this universe came into being with a big bang, the big bang theory. Who says that? The most learned men of science, astronomers. They say, hey, where did you get these funny ideas from? This fairy tale about a big bang. So no, 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 it is not fairy tales. These are facts, demonstrable facts. We can demonstrate it, show you what is happening, and from that we can conclude if we had a film and put in reverse gear, so we could see what is happening is all coming back again. With the way it's going out, the balloon, if we can deflate it, you'll see it all coming back to one central point. And there was a big bang. When did you discover this? He said yesterday. 
Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. What is 50 years? Nothing. As an, an illiterate man in the desert, a person who didn't know how to read or write, a person who couldn't sign his own name, he could have, couldn't have known this, could he? He says, no, never. Impossible. A man doesn't know astronomy. He hasn't got the instruments. He hasn't got a telescope. Nothing. In the depth there. And among an Ummi people, illiterate people. And he is now telling you, this man in the desert, 1,400 years ago, and he split them asunder. And you biologists, people who study minute life, microplotism, the amoeba, he says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. And they tell you, so look, we look back in time, in space, he says, look, this is how life originated. There was a time when this earth was a molten mass. Nothing could have survived here. Everything boiling, boiling. And over a period of billions of years, you know, the vapors went up and came down. And the vapors went up and came down and started cooling this earth. It took a billions of years. And then started life, germs, plant life, and all these things started. At one time, there was nothing. And then it started. Where did life come from? It says from the sea. Certain chemical actions, the sun playing its part, and life started from there. Mm -hmm. When did you find this out? It's yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. An illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known that. Could he? says, no, never. He said, well, listen. So, and he has made from water every living thing. Say, will you then not believe? Who? You, men of science, you, men of learning, you kafir, you atheist, you agnostic, why can't you believe? This is not his handiwork. As Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنْسَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُطْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَرَحْمَةٌ وَذِكْرَ لِقَوْمِ يُمِنُونَ And these are signs Blessings and a remembrance for a people who believe that he might have written this. In a verse preceding this, verse 48 of Surah Al-Kabut, chapter 29, he says, He said, you were not in the habit, O Muhammad, you were not in the habit of reading as if out of a book. وَلَا تَحُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ Nor were you able to transcribe it with your right hand. Is Allah الْقَابَ الْمُقْتِلُونَ In that case, these talkers of vanity, these babblers in the marketplaces, they might have had some reason to doubt. Muhammad was a learned man. He says, you see, he was in the certain university. And you know, now he's telling you these things, his theories. Yes, they might have some reason to doubt if he had been through that schooling, if the Arabs had some knowledge or understanding of science, learning, nothing. Allah shows you that he sends you an, an Ummi prophet to an Ummi people. Amazing. He chooses a nation steeped in ignorance, the whole of Arabia. There were no more than half a dozen people that could read or write. In the whole of Arabia, the nation is Ummi to the core. And he chooses the Ummi prophet, you know, to prove to you that this is my work. This is, I am doing. <laughs>